<clears throat> He'll be there shortly, so I hear the page go up. <clears throat> I waited a little bit more, I pushed the button again. <clears throat> So I looked at Debbie, I said, you know, because I'm not real patient. I said, what should we do? Nobody's coming to slice my hand. She goes, I'll push it. <laughs> Finally, the lady in the deli says, you know, you've waited like 10 minutes. Just give it here. I'll slice it for you. I don't know where he is. Leadership. I was not impressed with Chief's meat department yesterday. <laughs> the leader was not leading. And what happens, guys, when a leader doesn't lead? Things begin to unravel, don't they? Things begin to fall apart. You ever snagged a piece of carpet and pulled, and pulled, and pulled? And pulled? It never ends, does it? Pull. She'll say, stop it, cut that off. Pull. It goes on and on and on and on. Leaders must lead. But leaders get discouraged too. We've all been around folks. Maybe your boss at work that's having a bad day. You kind of feel the wrath of that from time to time, don't we? Leaders get discouraged. The leader, Zerubbabel, was upset. He was discouraged because the Jewish folks would start and then they'd stop. And then they'd start and then they'd stop. They did nothing consistently. And he was the one God had appointed to build this temple. All the familiar landmarks in Jerusalem were gone. The city walls were not down. Everything was a mess. God asked him to rebuild all of this. He was discouraged. He was upset. The temple was a mess. So what is the best way for us today? to be successful. Enough sad stuff. What's the best way for us to take today as today and move on? Don't give up. You can't. You have a purpose in this life or you wouldn't be breathing air today. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. Don't matter how tough things are, you've got to stay in the game, guys. You can't give up. You have got to ask God into your life and trust Him in all things. I had no idea Lynn was going to pick that song to sing this morning. No, no, no. I'll cast on Him my every care. And wait for thee. He's right here. He's trying to help us. He's trying to encourage us. We got to keep our nose into it. We got to keep on doing what He's put before us. I've watched folks walk through medical problems, medical issues. Treatment after treatment, test after test. Caught on folks that one minute they feel like a million bucks, the next minute they don't think they're going to make it. Sickness is, life is tough. But the same God that is in here that gives me strength, they can have also. Are you willing to share that with them? Are you willing to be the leader that God's called you to be? Are you willing to take His Word and walk with it day by day by day? Matthew 24, verses 36 and then 42 through 44 tells us this. 
No one knows about that day or hour. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known all the time, or had known what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would have not let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect Him. Now we hear all this Maya calendar stuff in the year 2012 and all. Guys, it don't matter. Be ready today and the rest will work out. You can't let things happen that pull your eyes off of the Almighty God. You can't let it happen. We are His hands. We're His feet. We're His eyes. We're His ears. We all got one of these, don't we? Thank goodness. Because you know, if I had two of them, I'd probably talk different out of each one, it seems like sometimes. We're His tongue. His mouth. God wants to bless us. He wants to use us. He is the Almighty. We hear the predictions. What does the Bible teach us? We hear the stories. What does His Holy Word tell us? Live today. Help someone today. It might just be holding the door for somebody. It might be making something a little extra for the dinner later on. Help somebody today. You know what? When Lynn and I go out calling, and sometimes you don't really feel like it, I get so encouraged by the reception we get in these homes that I feel guilty for feeling the way I did when I started. God is good. He wants us to do what He has called us to do. He wants to be our Master, our Lord, our Savior. Cast every care on Him. His return is near, guys. It's close. It's coming. Are you ready? The altars are open. There's folks available this morning to pray. You know, if you're just walking through something that's a little tough, grab a hand of somebody. Say, hey, I need prayer this morning. We want to pray with you. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for our visitors this morning, Father God. We just pray that their journeys will be safe. Father God, we thank you for your word, your holy and mighty word. And this morning, Father God, we do. We cast every care on you. And we trust in you for the final results. Be with us this day, Lord, as we come and go and do our business. Father God, be with us again tonight as we gather again to watch over you and trust in your word. Just bless us today, Lord. Keep us safe. And allow us to be an encouragement to one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.